Okay. Awesome, awesome. All righty. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you again for joining here today. <clears throat> Similar to how we started last, the last lunch and learn. If you hear me say um at all, Sue, <laughs> please type it in the chat box. And the reason why I do that, one, is accountability to myself to get better at presenting. Um, as I kind of disclosed last meeting, our last lunch and learn, speaking in front of people, giving presentations, doing lunch and learns are a, a place of anxiety for me. So I'm overcoming, I'm overcoming that and mastering that. So I'm working on perfecting my speech. But then also I do that for a second reason, to get more engagement from you guys. Um, the more engaging this is going, the more engaging this presentation is, the more you guys will get out of it and the more I'll get out of it as well. Um, so it's a win-win for everybody, the more we engage. Plus, if there's any pain points or any issues you've had with social media, feel free to put those in the chat box as well so I can make sure that we're addressing those issues right away. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so can you all see my screen the presentation here okay is yes. the chat box over top or is that chat you can't see that chat box okay good perfect perfect all righty so let me put this in presentation mode <clears throat> all righty come on load up for me And are you still seeing the presentation here? Okay, perfect. Yes. All righty. So <clears throat> quick little rundown about myself. My name is Paris Gray, co-founder and CEO, um, Iceberg Ads. Uh, I'm a full-time father, graduated with an electrical engineer degree, so electrical engineer by trade. Um, I love being active, as you can see here, football, skating, boxing, um, podcast. Um, being busy is kind of always been my forte. It's, I've always, I, I don't like sitting down. I don't like idle time. Um, and the, one of my favorite models is you sleep when you die. So, um, so yeah, I'm always on the grind, always on the move. And I feel like that always, it works very well with me. Um, <clears throat> as a, as a person, I've always had a, a strong desire to run a business and that kind of started in about 2013. And after a few failed attempts of doing some projects, I finally realized that I needed to learn a lot more. And about three years ago, I got into a business course um, and that just kind of sparked a whole desire to, to develop a business that is beneficial to people. The more and more I learned about business, I learned that to be a successful business, you have to really truly care about the well-being of your customers and helping your customers and clients and helping them get real results and provide massive amounts of value as much as you can. And everything about that intrigued me. So we started iceberg ads with that in mind and um when we started iceberg ads the whole concept was uh or excuse me the whole idea was there was a lot of negativity out on social media and if we could find a way to pump some positivity out into the world we wanted to do that as best we can so um those of you that you were at the last lunch and learn you'll recognize some of these slides but i'm doing this intentional because i want to bring awareness to it later when we actually break out and do kind of a workshop type of type of uh, feel in the, the latter half of the meeting. So again, here is the post that I had had the last lunch and learn. This is Wendy. She's also a Lakewood Chamber member. Wendy is brought us on to work with Hong's Restaurant. As you see, one of the posts that we helped in get engagement on with this right here, we got nearly 400 likes. You'll see when I show you a little bit later, we have over 400 likes on that one now. Um, uh, there was an um there, Sue. Uh, on this one here in the middle, there's 13,000 views on this post. And uh, another post here, we had nearly 400. Again, this is review, but this is, uh, I want to go over this because I want to come back to it later. And then also for the people that haven't seen this already, um, this is what Iceberg Ads does. So again, here's another post with Hong's Restaurant, 45K views. And we had nearly 20 or nearly 2,700 likes on the actual post. Huge key thing to point out here again is these engagements are localized engagements. So they're not just advertised to people all over the country or people all over the world, although people all over the world can see it. These are specifically targeted to people in the area. So why is that beneficial? That's beneficial because these are the ideal clients that want to be um, that Hong's restaurants wants to be customers coming into the restaurant. 
here's a project we did with Lakewood Chamber. Thank you again, Sue, for that opportunity. It was so amazing. But uh, we got to help with Lakewood Lemonade Day. <clears throat> on this ad, here's two ads here, one on the left, one on the right. The one on the left had 72,000 people that actually were reached by this post, 1,000 engagements. And then you see a few of the highlights there on the bottom with 52 likes and love, 17 comments, 25 shares. On the right, here was another ad we had ran for Lakewood Chamber. 22,000 people were reached. And if you see here, the link clicks, it was about 380 people actually clicked the link to take the next step into going forward into being a part of Lakewood Lemonade Day. Here are some other clients that we're working with. We got a few more that we've actually added since we were on vacation. Um, so that's just the kind of the quick rundown of what we can do and why we're qualified to, to be here speaking in front of you today. Um, our specialty, as I disclosed in the last meeting, was Instagram and Facebook for the three years that we've been in business. But as of two months ago, when Linda approached me for developing this uh, presentation for TikTok, we've developed a strategy for TikTok now because of how impactful TikTok is. So <clears throat> where the big amount of time that we spent on the last meeting was figuring out what TikTok was and what Instagram was. So the big question that we were addressing was, which plat what the platforms are and which ones should you prioritize? <clears throat> if you recall this graph here, this was the graph that we had I had displayed last lunch and learn to point out the trajectory of the organic reach that Facebook and Instagram were allowing you to get when they first started. So if you look at this, this axis axis here, this is reach, and then this is over time. So imagine this right here, the starting point, the origin being where Facebook and Instagram first started their platforms, when you would post on those platforms, you would get massive organic reach in the beginning. But as they started to dominate the market over time, they stopped rewarding people with the organic traffic and they started making you pay for the reach that you were going to get for your ideal clients. Um, as a platform, that's very powerful for them because that's how they make their money. But with TikTok, coming on the scene in 2016 and getting its massive following in with the pandemic, <clears throat> TikTok became the disruptor. And this is again, a reiteration of what we talked about last, last lunch and learn, but I wanna, I wanna drive this point home as we move forward. TikTok was the massive disruptor and it is duplicating exactly what Facebook and Instagram were doing when they first came out. It is rewarding people with massive organic reach. So if you're doing any type of campaigning, if you're doing any type of specials that you want to advertise, TikTok is the platform. There was a point brought to me by Linda um, from someone who was in the last meeting, John, that was in the last Lunch and Learn, saying that TikTok makes him uncomfortable because of the security factor of it, because it's owned by ByteDance, which is, is a, a China-owned company. Um, that is a real concern. And if tick, if that's one of your concerns that bother you, because there are reports out there showing or proving that there are employees that have wrongfully gathered TikTok information of Americans. Um, if TikTok makes you nervous, then I do not advertise that. I do not promote that platform to you. But if you're able to have the mentality of the high risk, high reward, um, then TikTok may be for you. Um, if TikTok is not for you, like we talked about in the last Lunch and Learn, Instagram will be the platform for you because everything you create on TikTok, you can duplicate and repurpose and use on Instagram. But just as a, as a, as a baseline here, TikTok, in my opinion, is the better perform or better platform at this moment because we're in that organic reach phase. <clears throat> so... I know there's about three of us that were here from the last meeting um, in the chat box. If you don't mind, would you let me know how many of you actually took action on the tips that I offered at the last meeting and any social media type of posting since that last meeting? Nothing yet, no worries. 
And if you don't mind, Linda, nothing yet. And if you don't mind, why nothing yet? Um, as we discussed, um, I'm, I, I still have reservations about TikTok. Um, it wasn't just John, it's uh, myself as well. And okay. um, uh, I uh, have... Meh. I, I haven't I haven't gone any further as far as opening up an account with TikTok or otherwise. Um, if if anything, I'll probably want to get my my toes wet in, in IG reels. Um, and um, you, you actually um, started an account for us, right? Um, yep. uh, in Instagram. So uh, I, I think that since that's already kind of a done deal, that that's probably where we'll want we'll want to start. Understood. Um, and uh, and that's the only reason. That's the only reason at this point that, that I haven't done anything. Okay. Note it. Note it. Uh, and Stacy, is that correct? With Washington Pawn? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Ponders, pawnbrokers. Pawnbrokers? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you said set up, did a video a while back, but are slowly trying to get back into it. Okay. Awesome. Well, good, good, good. And if you ever need any assistance, please reach out. Shoot me a Facebook message, text message, whatever. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Tended to create a TikTok account. However. I know that Maringi um, commented um, on um, a post um, on our chamber uh, uh, Facebook page that uh, she thought everything was great until she she heard you say that, you know, everyone should come up with about a hundred, um, a <laughs> hundred videos and, and that freaked her out. So <laughs> I think that, yeah, I, I think that, uh, she, she needs to be, she needs to be talked off the ledge and, and understand that that's, that's a goal. That's not, um, sure. you know, that's not the baseline, right? For sure. For right? sure. And, and, okay. Okay. And that's, I, where I was going with that post a hundred posts, was I wasn't talking about the archive, although it is nice to have a large backlog of content that you have for rainy days. If you get sick, um, mm -hmm. we're constantly running into COVID season. Um, you don't necessarily want to develop content on those days. So having a stockpile of content is very useful, especially on those rainy days. Um, but where I was going with that, that concept of 100 posts was develop a strategy Stick to that strategy for 100 posts, because what so, so many people do, and we see this in our consulting work a lot, is people will start a strategy, not see a lot of likes in 30 days, and then revamp that whole strategy and their style of posting, everything in regards to what they had developed or spent time in, they just, they switch it up too fast. They don't give time for the algorithm to start rewarding you. They don't give time for the consistency to start paying off for people to see in those regular posts popping up and start expecting those posts to pop up. So that's where I was going with that. So I, sure. I, I may need to reach out to her directly and explain that a little bit better. But but yeah, I saw that comment. Okay. It okay. made me chuckle a little bit. <laughs> Judy, Judy uh, I have a point in this presentation that will answer that question for you. So posting from the computer or from the mobile is doable and you can do either one. So I, wish, I will show you some tips later on as we work through this presentation. Uh, I'm sorry to hear your Facebook account got hacked. I hope you, I hope you can get that solved. If you can't reach out to me and uh, maybe I can help you expedite that process. Sue, with the weird feeds, do you mean weird feeds as in the type of content that was popping up? Yes. It was, um, when you put in your preferences, to me, that says that's kind of stuff I want to see. For sure. But the stuff I was seeing was nothing that I had indicated I wanted to see. Gotcha. And it was, some of it was kind of off-putting to me. Understood. So it was like, okay, bye. <laughs> For sure. And, and that's a great point. We actually just started working with a coffee shop here in Tacoma that had the same concerns. And she was bothered by the profanity, bothered by the amount of people that were dancing and showing their bodies a lot on the, on the TikTok platform. So my advice on that is, do you, do you use Pandora at all, the music streaming platform? No. Okay. So with Pandora, <clears throat> Pandora, you basically pick your playlist. So 
say if I'm looking for an artist, smooth jazz, and maybe the genre of music I'm looking for in that category, or excuse me, in that playlist, as you have that playlist, you can like thumbs up or thumbs down the different musics that come on there. And then it will start tailoring your account to the music you actually like. Same thing with TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. The more you don't like, or excuse me, the content that you do not like, if you hit the little do not like this, do not want to see con or more content like that, the algorithm will start picking that up and it will stop showing you anything that's relevant to those type of, uh, those type of content creation or, or genre. So, um, so yeah, so there is a fix to that. I know it's, it's difficult and it, it takes some time to really get it polished to where you want it to, but there is a solution for that, just so you know. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. And I will come back to these as we continue forward, but um, I, I don't want to make sure we get into the presentation, but I would definitely come back to these questions. So <clears throat> these here, I wanted to bring these up again because these are the tips I ran through at the end and I ran through them really, really fast. So anybody that was taking notes or wanted to get these tips, I'm going to go through them again because they're going to be what we use as we develop posts as we move through this presentation. So this was the first tip here. And if, again, if you're taking notes, you could screenshot it. You could take notes, however. But I, I just want to make sure these are on the screen so you have these. These are great benchmarks if you're going to do any DIY social media um, strategy. If you're wanting to grow your followers, if you're unsure how to start or what tips or guidelines you need to keep you focused or on the right track, these are going to be exactly what you're going to need here. So the first tip is develop a baseline. As I stated before, um, get your handle. <clears throat> Pick a handle that you can have on every single platform. The reason why is because the more congruency you have, the better. And on top of that, when, you, when customers go on Google to search your business, if you can have your name in your, as your handle, and what I mean by handle is when somebody goes on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook, and they type in your business name, say Veterans Roofing, if you can get that name on all those platforms on Google, you'll actually be rewarded through your search engine optimization because all those platforms will pop up when somebody on Google types in veter Veterans Roofing. So it works to your favor because when somebody goes to Google and types your name in, all of your content will start filling that first page and you won't lose customers because they're getting, falling in the rabbit hole, getting sidetracked or distracted, seeing other businesses that have similar names. Your, your, that front page will literally be all of your content. Um, when you develop your baseline, note how many followers you have on each platform, how many views you, you have, how many likes. And the, the, the important matrix here is how many sales are you making from this platform? How many leads are you actually capturing from each one of these platforms? The likes and the views and the follows are all amazing, but if it's not improving your bottom line, then all of that stuff is pointless. <clears throat> Next point, uh, TikTok profile checklist. TikTok and Instagram, um, the checklist is for both of them. <clears throat> congruency, I can't preach that enough. The more you can have brand congruency across all of your brands, the, the feel, the style of the post, the voice of the, the post, the brand archetype, and we'll cover that a little bit as we work through this as well. But <clears throat> the more you can be congruent, the more your ideal client will, will be, will understand the feel and know your brand and continue to become drawn to your brand more and more as time goes by. Um, have a clear profile picture where you're smiling professional. Craft an emoji pack concise bio and i'll show you guys a, a, an example of that later when we go to my page um characters you want to be i tick tock limits you to 150 characters i believe instagram is the exact same so it's not a lot of space to work but if you just get the point across hit the main buzzwords of your niche or your business and then put some emojis in there to make it a little bit uh, have a little bit more flair more pop it tends to draw more people in um, add keywords that describe you in your bio, um, who you are, who you help, what you do, what answers you, you provide. Um, add your web link and then connect your Instagram and, and YouTube. <clears throat> Tip number three, specify 10 subcategories for your business. So as we, as we talked about in the last Lunch and Learn, this is where you can really identify the areas and the individual niches that you can prioritize. In Instagram, you want to be a little bit more singular with your focus. 
because with Instagram, you're going to be promoting your business and your brand, but you don't want to have too many tangents. With TikTok, because there's so much organic reach, right now you can be as free flowing as you want to be. So what I mean by that is you can talk a lot about your business. You can talk about your hobbies. You can talk about little funny things and just post random things that have nothing to do with your business. Why are those things important is because with TikTok and the organic reach, the more people you can pull, the better for you, because there will eventually be an overlap of the people that have the same interest in all those categories. And those will be your ideal clients, your raving fans, the people that are going to stick with your brand as time goes by. Create a clear direction of your business and your social media strategy. So in this one, I want to break out into the brand archetypes. Is anybody on here familiar with the term brand archetype? No? Okay, awesome, awesome. So it's a great point to learn here. So with the brand archetypes, what they are is essentially developing the personality of your brand. So many of us take the little personality test, horoscope, we follow horoscopes, but rarely do we do it for our business. And with iconicfox.com.au slash brand archetypes, um, I'll actually put that in the comments so you all have that here. When you go to this site, it's amazing to see what you can uncover here because it is very descriptive and it also gives you examples of other brands that are out there that have the different archetypes. So some of the archetypes here that um, I will cover really quick, outlaw is one of the first ones there. When you think of a brand that has an outlaw type of brand archetype, you're thinking brands like Harley Davidson, brands like the Diesel, as you see here, um, the Cologne that's out there. <clears throat> outlaw archetypes, they don't necessarily walk in a straight line. They don't necessarily want to do everything like everybody else does. They're going to stand out and they're going to do it their way. They're, they might be very aggressive with their tone. Um, it, it, there's not much apology that's going to be with their tone and they're going to be up in your face and, and here with it. They're very disruptive. They, they really don't care um, about ruffling feathers. <clears throat> why a brand like, or excuse me, why a brand that identifies as outlaws wouldn't be good for everybody? Because if someone that has, say, a lover type of brand archetype tries to promote or post like an outlaw, people that are engaging with your content are going to feel that something's off like you're you're this isn't authentic it's not organic it's it, something feels off and they'll sense that so why this is important is because one it helps us identify our brand but then two as we're looking to grow our social media and we're looking at different brands that we may have idolized or we want to model our business after you have to realize that you have, you have to stay in your lane essentially because Although they may be doing something and getting away with it and their fans may gravitate to it heavily, that may not work for you because your fans will see that that's not your personality and that's not who you are. Another brand archetype, for example, is the lover. Um, this has got Victoria's Secret. So when you see Victoria's Secret, when you see their ads, you see uh, intimacy, you see um, touchy feeling, caring. Um, those type of qualities in those brands, you would never see those type of posts coming from Harley Davidson. <laughs> um, um, um. <laughs> and I don't even notice it. That's, I, I got to go back to this presentation. But um, so yeah, so, so as, a, as a tip on that tip, I believe we were on tip number five, figure out your brand archetype. Take that tool there, explore that and understand exactly what drives you and what's nice in that in that link there, it actually helps you identify by showing like the drive. Do you have the what drives you? My my brand archetype is the hero as my primary and as my secondary archetype is the sage. With the hero <clears throat> brand archetype, it's you're obsessed with mastery. That's what drives you. And then it also identifies fears that you may be able to help narrow down which archetype is yours, and then also strategies that you can use as well. 
these are all great tips when you're actually developing your own social media strategy and going out there and developing how your brand is going to be represented as well. Moving on to the next tip here. After clear direction, <clears throat> repurpose your content. So I've already kind of said that earlier, but repurpose your content. And what I mean by that is po if you do develop content for one platform, do not hesitate to repost it onto another platform. For TikTok, when you create TikTok videos, it automatically puts a watermark on there. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you see here on this TikTok, you'll see in the bottom right, there is a watermark, a TikTok watermark and it. As the video continues to play, you'll get a watermark that flashes over here as well. There is an amazing tool called SnapTick, and I have that on the screen now, SnapTick. And Judy, this is a good one for you as well, where you can take your TikTok video, take the link, post it into here, and it will remove that watermark for you. So <clears throat> the myth of not being able to advertise on these platforms because you operate on, on desktop, I want to debunk that as much as possible because you can do everything you need to from a desktop um, and be just as effective. If you are a mobile user, there is an app for it um, and a SnapTik TikTok video downloader. So um, you can install it at the, the Google Play or the iTunes store as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a question there? Okay, no? Awesome. All righty. So, and then just starting, getting out there, putting your brand out there. Don't be a perfectionist. Um, you will learn as you go and continue to level up as you go. It's always an ongoing process of learning and adapting, algorithms changing, figuring out what you need to do. Um, it's an ongoing process. So never feel like you have to be a perfectionist and get it perfected overnight. Um, it definitely takes time, but you will get it the more you do it. Excuse me. The, excuse me, I think tip number seven is consistency over frequency. This is a point that I made in the last Lunch and Learn. Screenshot this if you need a framework or a guideline. Start off posting three to five times a week. As I pointed out before, posting on the weekends does not get you that much engagement. Um, the return on investment, we got the data that shows that you just don't get as much impact on the weekend because people are posting more and people are doing more stuff on the weekend so they're not engaging with as much content. After you hit to three, or five, three to five times a week, Monday through Friday, um, you can work your way up to three to five times a day. Again, that's specifically for TikTok, <clears throat> but the other platforms, or excuse me, that's specifically for TikTok three to five times a day. And once you get advanced, you can get up to 10 times a day, but on Instagram and Facebook, you only wanna post once a day. There's other platforms, or excuse me, there's other accounts that post more than once a day, um, but they have a strong following of people that are engaging with each one of those, or they're actually putting ad spend to each one of those to get a lot of engagement um, on each post. So the framework for Instagram and Facebook is just post once a day. But if you're doing stories, you can go crazy and post as much stories as you want to. <clears throat> Another tip, tip number nine, follow people in groups, businesses that have similar archetypes to you. Why this is important is because if you can align with the archetypes that are similar to you, you'll also be aligning to the, the ideal clients that are similar to you. And what I mean by that is people that gravitate to certain characteristics or certain personalities typically don't gravitate to other stuff outside of their comfort zone as easily. So if you can start figuring out that niche of other brands that are doing what you do, that uh, model um, the same type of products, <laughs> I heard that one too, uh, that model the same type of products that have the same type of following, if you start engaging with their customer base, those customers will start naturally, organically making their way to your platform. TikTok, excuse me, TikTok, algorithm as just a reminder is next level the backdrop is very 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 important if you notice here today i got my backdrop actually updated and it's all intentional everything that's there is intentional as i make my videos and i get more more publicity to the post that i'll be making you'll see that 
everything that I have in the background may have something to do with exactly what I'm talking about in the video. And more into that, it also identifies with my brand archetype. So my interest, um, I have a heavy interest in snacking and I'm looking to find ways to be able to co-brand with people that will actually pay me to promote their snacks. Um, skating, I love skating. As I pointed out, I'm, I'm, I love being athletic, doing fun stuff. Um, but that's also, that's also content that I'll be posting in Instagram and TikTok as well to help bring in my brand archetype. <clears throat> I got some some martial arts stuff that I do, my uh, Muay Thai shorts, books. I love reading. I love knowledge. My boxing, uh, my other business, networking, some boxing up here, my brand promoter at the top. Everything is intentional. And the reason why I point that out is because with TikTok's algorithm, it can scan your background. And when it's able to scan your background, it's able to help you get in front of more of your ideal client because of what you have in the background. So do not do not take that tip lightly because it definitely will help you. Instagram, to my knowledge, its algorithm isn't as advanced, but people's eyeballs will gravitate to what they like. So if you have stuff in the background, if it's kittens or dogs um, in the background, that may grab someone's attention. If you have, um, for Judy, if you have, trophies or plaque in the background on display, people will be able to see and get that social proof that you produce quality work just from seeing your post. And you may not even say anything about it, but its presence there will help your brand and help your marketing strategy. And then here's the tip we were talking about earlier about don't judge yourself until you get to the first hundred posts. Just get those first posts out there. So before I kind of move into the next spot, do we got any questions on these tips or did anybody want me to go back so they can screenshot any of the, the slides there? Okay, no, awesome. I have a quick question. Yep. Uh, um, on the art, yeah, on the okay. archetype, is there a way to um, take like a survey or a test to figure out which archetype would be yours or is that just something you figure out on your own? Um, so that's a great question, and I've I've not seen a test, but I'm sure there's definitely one out there. But um, but if you just click, so I'll sh can you still see my screen here? The uh -huh. archetypes. Okay, so I'll just click. Here's one that I identify with the hero. So when you click it here, it takes you right down to that brand, or to excuse me, to the description here, and in here it'll tell you your brand voice, honest, candid, brave. Your messaging will be. We can make the world better. Other brands that identify with your brand archetype. And then it gives you a very detailed explanation of what that archetype is. <clears throat> then okay. here, as we go down further, this is what I was talking about with like identifying your drive. Um, are these things that drive you? Are these things that you fear? Are these things that you consider yourself as part of your daily strategy? Becoming, becoming stronger, better person, prove people wrong. And then it gives you even more detail into it. So there's a lot of information here on each one of the archetypes that will help you identify exactly what, what you care for and, and which ones will be good for your brand. Okay, My thank advice, you. uh, you're definitely welcome. My advice is because there's overlap in some of them, pick a primary and pick a secondary. And that will help narrow it down just a little bit more. <clears throat> awesome, so <clears throat> going into going into the platforms, to actually get started with posting. So I don't know how many of you actually use, let me ask that question. How many of you actually use desktop over mobile devices when it comes to social media? <laughs> Judy, that's one. I believe Sue uses desktop more, or Linda does desktop more. I knew that. Uh, good, good, good. And I'm not able to see everybody here. Both? Okay. Both from Sarah as well. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Awesome. So if you use both and if you don't use both, you'll know that the desktop version has limited features compared to the mobile version. But personally, I use mobile business and use, I use desktop. Okay. Noted. Um, so, yeah. So the both or excuse me desktop has limited features compared to the mobile but what is awesome is you can 
still see the content in a mobile view, even though you're in desktop. So even though the features are a little bit limited, um, if you need one of those features, you can always go to your mobile and do it there. Um, but, excuse me, but where am I going there? Um, but a cool little tip here I want to show you is if you're contemplating on will it look good on my clients or ideal clients phone, if they are looking at it mobile, there's ways to find that out. So here's a little quick tip. If you right click, are you able to see this pop up here with back and save and print and inspect? Is that popping up? Okay, good, good, good. So if you right click on your screen when you're on desktop and go to inspect, let it load up here, it will give you a mobile view. So this right here is what it looks like on a Galaxy, a Galaxy S8 Plus. If you click this little drop down here, it gives you all the popular phones that are out at the moment. So you'll be able to see what other people will see when they actually engage with your content from a mobile device. So that's kind of a cheat code that you can use when creating content because it will allow you to be able to make sure that people on mobile devices don't have wonky looking uh, content when they actually see it or content that's too large and won't fit their, their device. Alrighty, so now getting to the post and actual posting. So <clears throat> when you're posting on these platforms, there is a few frameworks that you wanna keep in mind. You want to develop, what was that right click, excuse me? <laughs> right click, <laughs> mind blown, <laughs> good, <laughs> good, but awesome. So when you're creating content, things to have in mind is you wanna, keep a consistent framework. Why? Because you want to have a, a look and feel that your, your customers and your clients can get used to and start expecting as you pr produce more and more content. So typical framework we like to use is in the beginning, you have a hook with your content. In the middle, you develop three to 11 talking points, valuable points that are, that customers definitely want to hear or can learn from. And then at your end, you have call to actions. So I got some saved ones, saved posts here that I wanna kind of just cycle through and show you what are some good examples of good content. So <clears throat> these are examples. So obviously you don't have to create stuff that is just like these but these are just to give you ideas of what you can do for your business that may be beneficial to you in the long run. Um, there may be some profanity. I tried to keep ones that didn't have much profanity in it for uh, just to be a little bit more respectful, but some of these do have profanity in them, but you obviously do not have to include that in yours, but these are just kind of some jump starters to help you identify what's some good quality content that people are engaging with a lot. So, I picked a, a, a range of content with different levels of likes and shares and engagement, but I wanted to show you this because it will give you a, a good framework of what you can expect as you start posting because you don't get a lot, a lot of traffic up front without ads unless you're doing it consistently and unless you have a strong following online. So these are the posts that I had showed you in the presentation. They were almost a 400 likes. As you see now, they've climbed in the past month to a little bit, to nearly 450, nearly 430 here. I'll play these just to kind of give you, give you some insight to some content that we've created. Excuse me, let me move this bar and actually hit the sound. <clears throat> so with this one, can you guys hear me in the video? I couldn't hear you. Could you? Can you guys hear me in the video? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Good. Good. Um, so yeah. So this one here, the hook was a dessert that looks very, very satisfying as you're pouring the dessert. We didn't really have any words or any tips on this one because the video speaks for itself. But there's a trend on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook Reels that identifies with 
very satisfying type videos. So anything that you can make satisfying and and let me get let me back up a little bit, give a little history on that. Um, a couple of years ago, people just started cutting soap and it just took off massively on social media. Um, and it was just a hot knife going through soap. But because it was such a gentle and just simple video, something about it was just satisfying for people. And I don't know if it was because of the pandemic time, people with high anxiety, it was nice to kind of see something just slow down for a little bit and kind of help you bring in your focus a bit. But that there was a whole trend and culture created around satisfying type videos. So that was the idea when we created this post here with Hongs is we wanted to go for that feel with the content here. So I'll, I'll play the video here so you see it. So again, very simple. It only took us three minutes to film this. And then we just went back, chopped out the parts that we didn't want to use for the video to make it seem seamless. And then high quality video with nearly 450 likes already. Another one here, the chicken video we did, we're going for that same type of satisfying feel. We didn't even have to put music to this and it was still able to get pretty good traction as well. That is the calendar that was down below so you know when he asked for what. Some more examples. Here we got someone, this one it's looks like a business that just recently started, or excuse oh, me, cool. not recently started, but had like a, a, a simple little video they were creating. No, uh, I think I'm hearing some audio. Somebody mind muting. Is that Aiden? It's Chase, right? Let's see. No, Aiden, Aiden is muted. Okay, it sounds like it's looks stopped. like everybody's muted. Yeah, I, I don't hear it anymore. Okay, good, good, good. But yeah, so this one's a simple one. This is a very, very simple concept. Got 14 likes. So when it comes to, to developing content, this is the point I want to make. It doesn't have to be the flashiest, the best, the consistency over frequency, like I pointed out before. The more you can get your content out there and you start developing content with the same type of brand archetype, with the same voice, and you're at least being out there consistently Monday through Friday, you're going to get engagement. This is such a simple post. Somebody literally just held their phone, flipped through the book, made it do like a, a little time loop back and forth, or forward and backward, and then literally posted it. That took them five minutes or less. They got 70 views, 14 likes. Um, why for them that's a good one <clears throat> is because depending on your page, how many followers you have, the algorithm only shows a very small percentage of your posts organically to your audience or your followers. Algorithm, or excuse me, Facebook algorithm in 2021, I think the update took it to about 4%. So for example, if you have a thousand followers, only about 40 people are, are, are going to organically see your posts with Facebook and Instagram with their algorithm, the way it's set up. If you have 10,000 followers, organically, you're going to reach about 400 people with each post. So that puts it into perspective of how valuable each like or engagement actually is. With this Richmond page, visit Richmond, Indiana, I don't think they have that many followers. Actually, we can go and verify that. So they have about a thousand followers, a little bit over a thousand followers. So that those numbers of how many people actually viewed it is, is almost spot on, is nearly that 40 range. So that just kind of gives you some perspective into what you can expect as you post. I can continue to go through these. I'll probably I'll play one more um, just to give you some ideas here of good value and a hook. So this one here um, has a little bit of profanity, but this is a great video for great video concept for anybody in the clothing industry or anybody that has any type of tips or tricks that that are that are good hacks that you can use. So she starts off with a hook. She gives you a few pointers of how to size for pants. 
and do it as quickly as possible. And then at the end, she kind of hits you with the call to action. So I'll show you here. Guys, I just taught Jazz this hack, okay? But if you do not feel like trying those pants in the store, all you have to do is wrap them around your neck like this and see those are going to be like, those will fit you just fine. I think they'll fit you better than the other. If it just barely touches, they're going to fit you. If it won't touch, they're not going to fit you. And if they, like, cross over way too much, they're going to be too big on you. So again, simple shots. All she's doing is just setting up a camera or having someone hold it. Trying on pants through her neck. Holy shit. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I hope that hack works for you for sure. <laughs> if you haven't tried it, I'm definitely going to try it. But, um, but yeah, so this, these are just giving you some jump starter ideas on what's quality content, what people are doing to, to, to get engagement and how, and just, I hope is a little more proof to, it's a lot easier than you realize when it comes to developing it. Yes, it's time consuming. I won't say it's, it's not time consuming, but it, it, if you're doing the right things, you will start getting that engagement. Um, so last thing I wanted to do before we got out of here today is I just wanted to show you how simple it is to actually make a post live. So if you're doing it on TikTok, or excuse me, if you're doing it on desktop, you do need to film it in advance so you can upload it, upload your audio or visual to the actual platform here. Um, but if you're doing it on mobile, which I'll show you here, it's a very, very, very simple process. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Excuse me. So I'm navigating to my TikTok app. I'm in my TikTok app here. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And it's the same steps on, on the mobile. Well, excuse me, on the mobile, you'd upload the finished video. But into the video there. <clears throat> I'm selecting either 15 seconds, 60 seconds, or three minutes. Like we had pointed out in the last Lunch and Learn, if you keep your content 15 seconds or less, that's ideally the mark you want to be at. Most viral videos, 90% of the viral videos that are out there are 60 seconds or less. Um, we typically find that if you switch the actual frame of the video, so if you notice in that pants video, there, she got a shot from her in the house. She had a shot in the car that was at a different angle. She had a shot in the store, a back at a different angle when she was actually back in her house. The more you can change the background, the more it's going to keep your audience engaging, um, whether they realize it or not. So typically the framework we like to do is like every five, excuse me, every three to seven seconds or so, we like to change the background or change the angle that it's actually being posted from. So example here, start off with the hook. Are you a business in the Lakewood area? Simple, sweet, to the point. What's nice about TikTok is when you're doing it on mobile, there is a little red button here. <clears throat> when you hold your finger on that button, it records live as you're, as you're holding the button. Once you let go of the button, it stops recording. So once you get advanced at creating videos on the fly, you can literally be sitting in your car, take 10 seconds, create a quick video, get it posted up, and be done. Um, because it's that powerful how, how easy the tool is. Instagram IG Reels is the same way. If you're using IG Reels, if you're using it on the mobile, it's the exact same way. You can hit the button and it will go and record until you let off the button. So uh, I just was, uh, what I say? Lakewood, are you a business in Lakewood? Looking to grow an advertisement, but don't know where to start? Follow our page for more. So three quick points, hook, excuse me, three quick points, call to action. So now I'm gonna play the video for you. Let me get my sound up. To grow an advertising, but don't know where to start, follow our page for more. Are you a business in the Lakewood area looking to grow an advertising, but don't know where to start, follow our page for more. Are you a so, business in the Lakewood? 
that's really simple. And for that one, I'll, I'll touch it up a little bit more later. But what's pretty cool is you can go in there, trim the videos right live on the app, trim the videos down to where you like them. You can put little captions on the top, follow Lakewood Chamber, follow Tacoma Trophies. You can put <clears throat> any little tips you want on there live here. You can create uh, speed loops on there as well with the app. And I don't know if you can see that there, but speed loops and then audio as well. Once you get to the, the next phase of it and everything's very intuitive, intuitive. Once you hit the, the plus sign to actually agree to liking that post, you can go and add sound to it. And that's where you can kind of pick from trendy sounds or things that everybody's engaging with. Um, last point while we're talking trends really fast. I want to show you a place on TikTok and Instagram where you can go and find trends and help you even more with gathering some content ideas as you go out and do this DIY with your with your media strategy. So on Instagram, are you guys seeing my Instagram here? No. You're not? Okay. Uh, let me try that one more time then. No, not the whiteboard. I want to go to Google Chrome. All righty. So now is that coming up for you? My Instagram? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. All righty. So this right here, this little icon that looks like a compass is a discovery icon. It will show you things that are in your niche or things that you like and are trending or popular right now. You can search in this area as well to kind of help you find uh, things that are, are that need to be discovered in your niche, but this is a great spot to start. What's awesome about here as well is you can also search hashtags. So we'll tattoo, Taco Tuesday, where did that one go? <clears throat> so if you're in the restaurant industry, this can be a hashtag that would be beneficial for you. Why hashtags are beneficial is because there are people that go to hashtags and literally just scroll and scroll and scroll, find content, engage with the content and well next thing you know maybe your newest followers so hashtags are important when posting because that can be a way for you to find clients that you never would have been introduced to either um insta or excuse me tiktok has something very similar to this tiktok has a discovery on your phone it pops up as soon as you you get on there on the bottom down here it's suggested accounts and it will load up here eventually, or excuse me, discover, there it is at the bottom. So discover on TikTok shows you all the trends that are there. The worst idea. <clears throat> so let me get down to it again. So on Sc discover, it's showing you all the trends <laughs> that everybody are raving over in TikTok right now. So a hashtag that's going live is, or that's getting a lot of traction right now, emo, country music, summer vibes would be a good one for any business. Um, flashing lights, it's a it's a kind of a catchy song that is catching a lot of people's attention. Soccer is in sports um, in general right now is is a really trendy topic right now as well. Multiverse, more music, jiggle jiggle. That's a that's got like a whole kind of culture and dance around it as well. Um, this again helps you with developing more content. So um, I know that was a lot kind of fast, but any questions regarding what we've talked about so far? No questions? Awesome. Well, I think that's a good place to stop um, because we're at our time. But um, but yeah, so I just I wanted to make sure that you guys today were equipped with enough tools to be able to make sure if you want to DIY your social media, that you have everything you need to. Those 10 tips I gave, the brand archetypes and the examples of content that I showed will allow you to be able to have a great framework to start posting and getting out there and, and getting your brand seen. If that sounds like it's a lot, feel free to offload it. So <laughs> if you want to reach out to us, we would love to be, be hired by you and help you in your brand marketing strategy. We also do consulting as well. But if you want to do it yourself, just start here. And my advice, again, just like with the last Lunch and Learn, just get started. Because the more you get out there and the more you do it consistently, you'll start to see that you'll start reaping benefits. One of the customers we've been working with, we've been working with for about six months now, 
uh, excuse me, five months now. And we, we got their, uh, their sales data in and we've been tracking and we're watching the progression of how their sales have grown month by month. And in March and April, before they brought us on, they were averaging $6,000 left in, less in sales um, before bringing us on. Now, after May on, they were making about $6,000 more per month than they were before they brought us on in social media. And in their industry, that's the opposite of how the trends are supposed to go. In the summertime, you're supposed to get less business in their industry, but they're actually getting more business. So I cannot impress upon you enough that being on social media and connecting your social media to your bottom line is going to benefit your business. Um, that's my time for today. Paris Gray, thank you all. If y'all got any more questions, I'll stick around for a little bit to, to answer what I need to in the chat box. Wow. Another fire hose presentation. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Now, if I could retain like 10%, right? I'm going to have to come back and watch this again. And sure. uh, by the way, yeah, I will I will uh, have this um, on the uh, Chambers uh, YouTube channel um, okay. sooner, sooner than later, I'm sure. Um, so I would like to, first of all, say thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I'm going to give you me. that. Yeah. Yay. Um, and um, I know that the Washington Pond Association, uh, Washington Pond Association, <laughs> our friend yeah. funders, yeah, uh, um, would like your contact information. So if you um, if you want to type that in there or or I can certainly I can certainly send it their way. Um Aiden, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, is there a part three to this series? <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Um, and thank you. Uh, boy, that was, that was a lot. That was a lot. And it was all wonderful information. Really appreciate you uh, taking time to join us. And um, I know that uh, if anyone... Um, Anyone wants to get a hold of you, you're you're on social. But um, if um, you guys are having difficulty finding Paris, just contact us, and we'll we'll get you hooked up with uh, his uh, email and his telephone number. Um, but I just, I just uh, if there are no questions, well. okay, great, good, good. Um, but if there's any questions, we're going to give you we're going to give you a couple of of minutes to shout out. And I know there were two people I need to go back to. Sarah's comment. I wasn't at the first meeting. TikTok is one of our current focuses to learn and grow. So thanks. I'm going to act too. Indeed. Glad you're here. Okay. Indeed. So Sarah, I'm glad you're here today because it sounds like you definitely have a good starting point. And if you need any, if you need anything from me, definitely reach out. I'm going to make a point to make sure I friend request every single one of you as well. So you'll have a uh, Facebook um, notification for me soon. And then Sean, I didn't attend the first meeting, but TikTok is somewhat toxic and silly in terms of the content coming source. So Sean, uh, I, I definitely sympathize with you there because it, it, with any social media platform, and let me just uh, kind of explain what his question was or what his statement was. He was saying he didn't attend the first meeting, but TikTok seems toxic because of kids hurting themselves doing some of these challenges. And it just, the, the content doesn't really, the content doesn't really uh, work with him well. And then also he's not seeing people uh, adult age actually engaging on the platform and using it. Um, so the first part I 100% agree with, any platform that you have, any social media platform that you had, um, you have, there's going to be teenage kids that are going to be wild and dumb and crazy. I mean, we were all there at one point. We just were lucky enough to where we didn't have camera phones like they do. Um, so, so they, uh, <laughs> right, so they, um, so they're, they're literally doing everything. I think there's a challenge now where there's a Kia challenge where people are literally 
stealing Kias with USB um, fobs or with USB ports and starting Kia cars with it. And they're filming it and it joy riding it and then crashing it. So 100% any social media platform, there's definitely going to be content out there. What's amazing about the power we have, though, is the more we engage with content that is not like that, the platform is going to recognize that and start seeing that people are gravitating to content that does not have harmful stuff in it. So I don't want to say power to the people, but that could be our way of moving the standard or excuse me, the, the, the viral content away from what is actually getting attention. We can start putting attention to other things. So, um, so hundred percent, I agree. I see what you're saying there, but it, that happens on every platform, not just TikTok. Um, I disagree when you say that adults aren't using the, the platform because it's definitely the post or what we covered in the first meeting is the pandemic traffic that TikTok was able to gather is, is just, it's unforeseen. No other platform can copy that. Um, they developed a whole culture around it because everybody was sitting at home bored, cabin fever, and they were, they were finding new ways to entertain themselves. And TikTok was, filled that void during that time. So a lot of adults are on the platform and more and more businesses are migrating to TikTok to do business. So um, I hope I answered that question there or kind of uh, addressed those things accordingly. But, um, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. It can be a toxic platform as, as well with any social media platform. Thank you, Haley. <laughs> thank you. I worked on it hard. I, I thank you. <laughs> awesome. And I don't see any other questions there. Aiden, I hope we can do a part three. Uh, Linda, I'm all, I'm all here. I'm all, I'm down for it. I would like to get a little bit more results so I could, everything that I'm, I'm coaching you guys with, I can come back and actually show some reports of, hey, this is what we are able to do for businesses. And this is why this strategy is beneficial for you. So, um, so yeah, I would like a little bit more time, but I would love a part three. I think I think this fall would be a, a perfect time uh, oh, right. to to have you back for for part three. I would love stress, it. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I would, too, uh, because I'm learning lots. And I think that everyone that tuned in today did as well. Um, right. And I second what Haley said. Great presentation. Thank and you. if if anyone if anyone knew your your quote fear of public speaking, um, no one would have ever, ever known, ever known. You did a Good. fantastic job. Thank you so much, Paris. Thank you. Thank you. We'll thank see you, you soon. All for being here. Have a great summer. And yep, all of you. Enjoy your, enjoy your son, huh? We'll see you soon. We'll do. We'll do. Thanks.